Next, we'll talk about a fairly simple but very important idea, that of a right triangle on the unit circle. And look at this first diagram. There's an angle theta. Remember, we start here and we rotate in this direction, and we've stopped here. Whatever point we stop at has x and y coordinates. This point, remember, is a point in the xy plane, so it has to have x and y coordinates. For example, look at the next diagram. Just as, as an example, I've picked a 63 degree angle, and if we start here and rotate through 63 degrees, that puts us at this point, has an x-coordinate of 0.454 and a y-coordinate of 0.891, and those numbers should, should strike you as believable. If we come right down here to the x-axis, I remember from here to here is 1, and, and sure enough, it looks like we're a little less than halfway there. And if we come over to this point on the y-axis, going up from here to here is a length of 1, and it looks like we're most of the way there, 0.891. So those values are believable. The point I'm making, though, is that whatever point at which we stop, we will have an x and y coordinate for that point. Okay, now think about this. When we rotate through some angle theta, we get to a point up here, we can draw a line straight down from that point to the x-axis. So I'm just going to draw a line straight down. And when I do that, I form a little right triangle in there. That right triangle, you can think of it as sitting on the x-axis with uh, a radius there, radius of 1, as its hypotenuse. The terminal side of the angle is the hypotenuse of the triangle. And I can do that for a large angle or a small one. If I just had a small angle of rotation like this, I end up with a, a smaller angle, but I can still come straight down from there and make a little right triangle sitting on the x-axis. And I could also do this for an angle larger than 90 degrees. If I rotate it around here into the third quadrant and stopped here, I end up at some point that has x and y coordinates and the terminal side of my angle is here. So this is my rotation, but I can still come straight down from this point and make a little right triangle sitting there on the x-axis. And in fact, I can do that in any quadrant. If I rotate it all the way around into the third quadrant, my terminal side would be over here, and I could still draw a little right triangle there sitting on the x-axis, or rotating all the way around into the fourth quadrant. Suppose I stopped right here. Well, then the terminal side of the angle would be there. And I could still draw a line straight to the x-axis and make a right triangle with the base of it sitting on the x-axis and the terminal side as the hypotenuse. And in every case, my angle or my rotation corresponds to some point, and that point has an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Okay, look at the next diagram. Uh, I've got this diagram drawn for you because it's easier to make these diagrams accurately with the computer than uh, drawing them freehand. Now, don't be intimidated by this diagram. It looks like there's a lot going on on the screen here, but this is just an x-axis down here and a y-axis up here. And we've got a rotation starting here, going along the unit circle, and it stops at this point. So the angle I'm looking at is this angle here, uh, this, this being the terminal side, and we're told it's a 63 degree angle, and that corresponds to this particular point that has these coordinates. The x coordinate is 0.454 and the y coordinate is 0.891. And all I want you to see on this diagram is that that x coordinate is also the length of this side of the triangle. If we're thinking about this triangle, Okay, the hypotenuse is 1, this side has a length of 0.454, and that's indicated in the diagram. And this side, the length of this side, has to be the y-coordinate. It's 0.891. And then you, sh you should also see that if this point up here has these coordinates, then we can also think of those points on our x and y axes. So look at those two points. Remember, this is an x-axis down here, and it goes on and on forever. And if we were to start marking it off, this would be 0, right here would be 1, 
two would be out here. And right here, this point, would be 0.454. So that number can also be thought of as a particular location on the x-axis. And the y value here, 0.891, that would correspond to this this position on the y-axis, 0.891. So the point I'm making here is, is that for any point we stop at, we have an x and y value. And in the case of a 63 degree angle, just as an example, we can think of these numbers as x and y coordinates of this point, or we can think of them as the lengths of sides of this triangle, or we could think of them as x and y values along our x and y axis. And all those, of course, are consistent with each other. Nothing difficult about that. There's nothing conceptually hard about these points on the axis or, or these coordinates or the lengths of those sides. But I just want you to see that those are all correlated.